to the drawing board. Let's not change everything at once, but ask yourself, where do I need to step up my communication game? And how can I move my needle forward? Make sure to celebrate your new people. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Christina Reed, Manager of Sales Education, and I want to welcome you to Seminar 2021. Thank you so much for attending our live Sales Director Workshop. Yes, I said live, and we have a power-packed morning of education with outstanding teachers bringing you strong teachings on a variety of topics to help you grow your Mary Kay business and empower others to increase their skills and confidence. And speaking of empowerment and confidence, let's get started with your first teacher. She has a fierce passion for her Mary Kay business and how it can change lives. Please welcome five-time Gold Circle Independent National Sales Director from the Diamond Seminar, Diana Sumter, teaching Dream Big, Think Bigger. Take it away, Diana. Mary Kay history, when everything around you was shutting down, you stepped up. When no one knew what to do, you joined us on Zoom. When everyone was feeling hopeless, you chose to be that ray of hope. And when everyone was frozen in fear, you figured it out. And we have laughed and we have learned and we have cried. And some of us might have even cussed a little bit, but we created a new way to connect. We have amazed ourselves at how resourceful we could be as we discovered a new way to do business. I truly believe that each of you were in the right place at the right time to lead our company to unimaginable success during this past year. Pat yourself on the back and give yourself some credit for not quitting, not giving up, and not giving in. You have kept going step by step, face by face, live event after live event, and here we are on the other side. Now, enough of that looking back. Let's lean into the future. Let's dream bigger than we ever have. Let's focus on the windshield versus the rear view mirror. There's a reason why one is huge and one is tiny. Like this queen bee is tiny. This queen bee is your future. This is where you want you to be. So it is time for you to pull out your dream box of grit. Let's design your dream life and then let's do it. It's a new year. It's a clean slate and you hold the pen. The characters, the storyline, the beginning, the end, you alone get to design your dream life. You get to decide, am I all out? Am I almost in? Or am I all in? All out. What's that? I'm just going to settle for what I have. Almost in, same goal, not changing anything. All in, new goal, new perspective, new schedule, new boundaries, so you can have more focus, more help, more people, more activity, more, more, more. You get to write either your winner story or your whiner story. Um, you are writing it every day, and it is determining your destiny, whether you like it or not. A winner story, y'all, is kind of like the old time capsule that we used to create. You write a letter to yourself with all of your hopes and dreams and your bucket list, and then you bury it and open it on a certain day in the future. And it allows you to live in your imagination and not in your immediate. A whiner story sounds something like this. Now, I know none of y'all have ever done this. I couldn't make this goal because my car broke and my kids have a cold and I couldn't find a babysitter. Oh, I think I got lit in my belly button. And people start these stories around the 20th of every month. And then they wonder, why the end of the month is so stressful instead of so successful. You created it in your mind and then the subconscious went to make it happen. It takes so much energy to justify why you miss a goal. No wonder people miss it. It's because you keep reliving it over and over and talking about why it is so hard. And I don't know who needs to hear this today, but you know, that's why I never resigned or stepped back. I just could not justify how I could explain my change of heart, right? On Tuesday, I'm like, woohoo, Mary Kay is the best company, the best product on the planet. And then on Wednesday, hmm, today it's not. Hmm. You know, I just couldn't look my unit members in the eye. It was an integrity issue for me. I chose, and I'm challenging you to build a culture of grit and commit and not a culture of quit. Remember that you hold the pen. You can push your pout. You just have to decide how long you're going to doubt. A winner story. Are you ready? So I want you to take some notes. Would sound something like this. 
Here I stand on stage, Leadership 2022, in my size 10 director suit, celebrating our unit earning the use of our first pink Cadillac. It took a caravan of four career cars to bring all of our directors to Atlanta. These leaders are women and men of excellence, and they have a strong work ethic, tenacity, gratefulness, and loyal to me and Mary Kay like I've never seen before. I paid off $10,000 in debt and saved $10,000 for our future. I have chosen to work with peace and joy and harmony as I grow my national area. It feels so good to have been a woman of my word, keeping the promises to my family um, every day. There is no guilt, no shame whenever I look in the mirror at night. I don't have to worry about production since we've doubled our unit size. And I got 10 red jackets holding power starts as they unlock additional streams of income as they are independently growing their client base and teams of teams. What an honor. What an honor to watch them build boldly and live out their dream life. I love hearing my winter story shared from the stage about how we overcame every difficulty, dilemma, doubt, and discouragement. There is no whiner story here. I survived the pushback, so now I can equip the next generation to step out of a life of excuses and into a land of excellence. I am living out the most powerful version of me, giving God the glory. And as I write this next chapter of my story, woohoo! Oh my goodness, what would that feel like starting? and ending every day with something like that. I'm going to challenge you. Start writing your winner story right now throughout this seminar and then go public with it. There is nothing more powerful than accountability for a person of influence and integrity. I'm going to share my winner story. It is to leave this company stronger than whenever I joined 34 years ago. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to debut at least five offspring nationals. I can see the stage now with them standing on the stage with me when I retire in eight years. So I am looking like leaders like never before. In September last year, the whole trajectory toward my dream changed with just two conversations. The first one, Teresa Huntley, who's been in my unit for four years, just staying active, just to get her products at half price. She sent me a video and she said, my eye is dry. And I said, um, nope, your dream is dry and we need a top. And she was a top director many years ago before being stationed in Europe and had a calling on her life to be a national sales director. She agreed to get started finally to step into her calling. Just 66 days from the day she decided and went public with her winner story of becoming a national sales director. She debuted as a national sales director. 30 days later, earned the use of her first career card. New winter story, 90 days. Um, then she led her unit to a premier club in four red jackets. New winner story, wrapped up the National Court of Sales and sharing in just nine months and set up for Cadillac by Christmas. And now is writing her next chapter winter story. ESD is happening as we speak. During the same month, I sent a goodie bag to Veronica Landry since she was having surgery. Veronica was one of our charter uh, directors when we debuted as a national area and then went over to Iraq. Fast forward 16 years later, Veronica was in another company, working a full-time job and <clears throat> using another product. In her bathroom via Zoom, she fell in love with so many of our new products. So she decided she would rather get her products at half price and tell a few of her friends about how the product has improved over the years. Thank you, Nathan, Allison, Regina, and Craig for all of the products and tools. I asked Veronica to help me with our Monday night events with training since she is a master at glamour and social media. She taught something every Monday night for eight weeks, decided to, small, to fly out to a small event we did in October, and her dream of becoming a pink Cadillac director was rekindled. She wrote her first winter story. We held the launch party and she added her first team member, Cora. In December, she entered DIQ and completed the first month of car qualification. She joined us as a DIQ in an event in April and wrote a new winter story because she knew her unit was going to debut, even though there was no evidence. Four weeks of working, no team members. <laughs> but she just kept putting Mary Kay on faces and sharing how we made money as she lived in her winner's story. Then on May 13th, there was a breakthrough. Finally, a new unit member. And from there, they added 17 people in just two weeks. She debuted as a sales director, earned the use of her first career car, wrapped up the National Court of Sharing, and is now writing her next winner story now that her first team member, Cora, is now her first DIQ. ESD is happening. Y'all, it is time for you to put together your pink blueprint for your dream. You hold the blueprint of your dream, right? It is in your dream box of grit. Let's design it and let's do it. 
the D in your dream, right? It, it's people get a dream and then they are driven by their dream. It's all they can think about. Everything looks optimistic. It's a brand new, fresh dream. It is your magnificent obsession. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you, what are you dreaming about? What does your dream life look like? What are your consultants and your unit dreaming about? How are you celebrating their wins? How are you keeping it in front of them? Doing notes or during your events? Um, I'm going to tell you, this is powerful because this is what my senior director, Connie Lamp, and my senior national, Karen Pirro, did for me as a new consultant. They kept my dream in front of me so clearly. It did not matter if I made the goal or not. I was closer to getting out of the military and being at home with our daughter. I knew exactly where I was throwing my combat boots over the bridge, what Samantha was wearing for her last day at daycare, what I was cooking for dinner for my sweet hubby Tom, and where Connie and I were going out to lunch to celebrate. Y'all, I was intrinsically motivated. There was not a force on the planet that could stop me from making this dream a, a reality. I was willing to do whatever it took and master whatever skill was needed. Now, here's where they were so smart. If I fell short on a goal, what they said to me was, great, there's another director lesson marked right off the list. Now keep the lesson and throw away the experience. So even when I went on and off target for our career car, it didn't devastate me because I was closer to becoming a director so I could financially step away from my Air Force career. I learned there was nothing wrong with me and nothing wrong with Mary Kay. Dadgummit, there just wasn't enough activity. It was as simple as that. It was no big deal. Y'all, you have done much harder things than this than just put Mary Kay on their face and ask people to join you on the business. Y'all, let's choose to be dream weavers and not taskmasters. Wasn't that why we wanted to lead in Mary Kay? We wanted to enrich lives. Consultants don't need another boss. What they need is someone to blast belief into their dream. Thank you, Kelly Petricola, for that term. This is why I'm more in love with Mary Kay now than any other time in my Mary Kay career. I can barely sleep. The R in your blueprint right here is when phase two starts to creep in. It is the reality meets your dream. This is where you start to say, wait a minute, this is going to take some work. It might even make me trade something for something else, like an exercise class, a TV show, or a practice game. And you heard Pam Shaw say this last night, time spent in one area is time away from another. During phase two, the question that rises in our head, is it really worth it? How much energy and emotion am I really going to have to invest in this dream of mine? When Crystal Gardner was in phase two as a new director, she had just moved from New York to Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, where she knew no one. Her unit was barely making production. She had not even earned the use of a career car yet and was at the bottom of our scoreboard. I remember the day she called me in tears and said, Diana, I was not born to be at the bottom. I want more. I want to be at the top. And I have a message to share. She lived in a really small town with very little support. And in fact, was told by the local chamber, so sorry you're in Mary Kate. No one here has ever been successful. She asked me, where is the evidence? that this can happen to me and happen here. I just got a job offer. Maybe I should take that while I figure out how to build here. And I asked her, Crystal, what if you're supposed to be the evidence? Before you decide to settle or quit on your dreams of you being um, out of debt and being at home with your daughter, let's work together to do three months of a power start and do it with the intent of finding your next um, stars, reds, career card qualifiers and directors. Let's see where that takes you. And that's where her winner story was born. She operated with the outcome celebration in mind. She was not controlled by the up and down emotions of the daily activity. It was the scene that she played in her mind every day. What was it going to feel like when we announced her as a power start winner during our NSC family event? Her winner story was written. It was sealed in her mind. And it didn't matter who said yes or no or now or whatever. She um, owned the outcome. And that was what she attracted. First power start. This, believe it or not. 30 faces, $90 total sales. Not so good. Second month, a wee bit better. Third month, a lot better. And she completed the first month of car qualification. Three more months of a power start and she qualified for her grand achiever tracking out Premier Club and her $100,000 debt was decreasing. A new winner story in place. Three more months of a power start. Premier Club earned a couple of unit members caught the vision and they began car qualifications. Can you feel it? Three more months later, she led her unit to their first pink Cadillac and debuted two first line directors. A new winner story. Three more months of power 
Power Start, and they completed their first unit club. A couple more months of Power Start, and the Unstoppable Unit was recognized as our number one unit and number one most improved in the state of Tennessee. Another winner story realized and a new one written. She is on the run for number one in the nation. As you can see, winner stories are crucial, but they're only about three to six months in dura duration. So then you need to create a new one. What is driving your dream? You cannot just talk and write about it. It takes action with intent. Enough of all of this analyzing, y'all. It is time to start asking. You know what to do. You've already done it. It takes what it takes to be in the top 2% of our company. You are the evidence. Starting today, write out that winner story. How's it going to feel um, at leadership? Keep your dream life clear. Who's going to be impacted by your success? The E in your blueprint of success is evaluate. You've got to evaluate and decide what a powerful day and a powerful week looks like. Bridget did a phenomenal job last night talking about that. But a powerful day is a goal that you can control no matter what people say. My powerful day has always been to focus on one to three dream sessions a day. That's what we call an interview. You. My powerful week was keeping 10 appointments up for me and my unit in the next 10 days. So we always had at least 10 people to talk about, um, about joining our company. When I rewarded myself at the end of each week, I, whenever I realized this goal, that's when it got fun. Try this this month and let me know how you feel. Also, evaluate who is in your inner circle. Make a list of the five people and boxer groups who speak into your life. Put a plus by those who make you feel powerful, an equal by those that make you feel the same, a minus by those that make you feel defeated. It could be time to jump out of some groups and put up some boundaries. You become like the five people you allow to speak into your life. And by the way, it also determines who your kids will become as well. So thankful that our daughter and granddaughter are influenced by Karen Pirro and our dream team directors. However, we have all got people in our lives that are not as excited about our dreams as we are. So when they ask you, how's your Mary Kay going? You say, it is indescribable because sometimes it's indescribably good and sometimes it is indescribably not. They don't need to know the details because they can't coach you how to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Little IAO for my military friends out there because they haven't been where you're going. Don't take advice from people that you would trade places with. And we do have a fun tool from our dream box of grit um, that, that help you overcome when people are not supportive. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to wipe their name off the board. You're going to say, bless their little hearts. And then what you're going to do is you're going to squirt yourself with glitter because you cannot be mad or sad whenever you're covered in glitter. You hold the can of glitter, right? It is in your dream box of grit. Let's do this. A in your dream is adversity and it takes complete control of your dream. And all you can focus on is the obstacles. The obstacles are situations that get in your way when you take your eyes off of the dream. You start to move from your winner story to your whiner story. And the best way I believe to handle adversity is to have a plan in place before it overcomes your dream. Let me give you a few examples. Amy Jones, Brenda Thole, and Mildred Rivera spent this past year caring for sick parents. They created virtual events with other directors. So if something happened, they could take care of that emergency while their unit members were still taken care of and had a consistent place to plug in. In fact, all of them earned career cars during the pandemic. Some of our adversity can even be the greatest blessings in our life. I'm so impressed with directors Kelly Petricola and Tara Pullman who both had babies during the pandemic, and yet they still built their strongest years ever virtually while breastfeeding and no childcare. They chose to match, master the virtual world so that they could plan their events around feeding and nap time with no excuses. They're living their dream life now. They're work from home moms. They're faith first, their family second, their career third. These champions never complained. They just hired more help and worked on their skill. They pivoted quickly like Lene Tate's area taught us to do. They combined events and invested in personal growth. When they saw a possible problem on the horizon, they just put some solutions in place before it became a total roadblock right? All of you all are so smart. You know what you need to do. What have you been unwilling to do? Arlene Lennard, my senior national, always did a little thing that says, I'm a member of the Din Din Club. Do it now, do it now, do it now. And get that in your head because it is time for you to train your brain not to complain. To overcome adversity, you need to erase and replace your second conversation that's happening in your head. These are the stories that you tell yourself that will become a label. Then the longer you wear the label, it is going to then become a filter. And then this 
filter that you're processing every thought and choice and action, um, that is going to determine where you go. It is time to step out of the box right? And rip off those labels um, that are with you. In fact, I'm going to just do a little thing with you here and just kind of show you what I'm talking about. Pitiful words, right? This is a pitiful label. It's called overwhelm. We're going to erase that. And instead of being overwhelmed, we are abundantly blessed, right? You feel like, you know what? I'm too busy. Erase that. And you are now going to say it is blessed to be in demand, right? You don't have enough time? No way. That's pitiful. Erase that. And now you say, it is time to do whatever is important. And I'm going to delegate the rest. How about this one? Oh, my gosh. I missed this goal before. Erase that, right? And you say, this time, it is going to be different because I learned what not to do, right? You say, I'm so afraid, right? No, I'm so excited, right? These labels are in your dream box of grit. When we get to now the last M in your um, blueprint, we're excited about this because it stands for mission. And at this point, we've got to learn that our purpose must be bigger than our problems, or we're going to meet in the maze of mediocrity. Remember when passion and purpose are present, discipline is never a problem. What do you want to be known for? What problem do you see that breaks your heart for other people? You're a part of that solution. Just figure out how to be a part of Mary Kay, how it can rescue people from this situation. It might be more money or a safe community or more confidence. You know how to connect the dots. Write this out as part of your winner story. Who is going to be impacted as you move up? What's story are you telling yourself? I want you to realize that you're going to attract that thought just like a magnet, right? You hold the magnets over in your dream box of grit. And so think about this. Whenever you're talking about the company, are you one of those people that are like, oh, there's so much change, right? No, try this, erase and replace. Oh my gosh, y'all, there's so many enhancements. What a generous company we have. Feel the difference in the words? How about the economy? I love the story that Mary Kay Ash always shared about two salesmen went to Africa. They both got off the train, saw nobody was wearing shoes. One called to the corporate and said, send me home. Nobody's wearing shoes. The other called corporate and said, send train loads. Nobody here is wearing shoes. What, which one are you? And how about the mirror of your thoughts, right? That's what you're living out and your unit. You get to decide, right? We know none of you do this, but some people say, my unit's not working. I just got to replace all of them. That's a sense of entitlement. You're operating as if they owe you or they work for you. Y'all, this is a volunteer first force and they are going to stay where they are appreciated and respected. Or you could say this, our unit is very loyal and comfortable. And I am choosing to double our unit size to find more leaders. You operate with a sense of gratefulness for those who are with you. Because our company has so has no limited, you get to double your unit size with the people we choose at any time. I didn't get to do that in the military. My entire Air Force career was dependent on a team I didn't get to pick or have the power to. It is so different in our Mary Kay world. Which of these uh, will you attract? The sense of entitlement or the sense of gratitude? Finally, I'm going to tell y'all you've got the power of pink and you hold the key, right? You can hold the key to these doors. You get to decide your destiny. Every day, there are three doors that you get to walk through. Door number one, that's where the land of the lazy is, where you are all out. That's where all the people who are all out. Door number two, that's the maze, the mediocrity. You know what? You're almost in. Same old, same old. Door number three is the land of excellence. That's where you're all in. Today, I'm going to challenge you to choose door number three because you're equipped to uh, step into the land of of excellence into your dream box of grit. You're going to change your story. You hold the pen, the eraser, the can of glitter, the magnet, and the key. It is time for you to be the queen bee. There is a chair waiting for you. Now is your time. Bye-bye, y'all. Can't wait to tell your story at Leadership. Oh my goodness, wasn't she amazing? Thank you so much, Diana. As always, we are so motivated and inspired by your teaching and your energy. Thank you so much for teaching us to dream big and lift the lid to even think bigger. Okay, so next up, we have a top sales director from the Sapphire Seminar. She's a 10-time member of the Queen's Court of Personal Sales, including two times in the top 20, and a four-time member of the Queen's Court of Sharing, including once in the top 20. She led her unit to achieve 10 unit circle appearances, including three times in the half million dollar circle of achievement, and three times in the circle of excellence. Everyone, 
Please welcome independent elite executive senior sales director, Brooke Bennett Young, teaching working with new independent beauty consultants. Take it away, Brooke. Oh my goodness. I hope that you are all picking up the pen and writing your winner story versus your whiner story. Well, I'm so excited to share with you some of the things that I have implemented to work with new beauty consultants. Now you guys, I did it so wrong. So let me tell you, this is how we do it right, right? We pivot. That's exactly what we've been doing. We learn from those that are around us. So first we need to remember to keep our steps simple. Most are excited but also very nervous. We are attracted and attached to their successes. We must be flexible. We have found many are more comfortable meeting virtually while others have been itching to meet in person. This is so important to remember in new beauty consultant conversations. So I also find their initial conversation can determine future engagement with the beauty consultant. And here's what I mean by that. I've always asked my team to introduce me with their new beauty consultant in a group text message. However, if that doesn't happen, as soon as I see the new agreement come through, I send a text introducing myself. I do this in a group message with their team builder. It's a simple text that says, welcome Susie, congrats on your new business decision. This is Brooke Bennett Young, your sales director. You should have received an email from the company with your consultant ID. Next, we want to set up your welcome appointment. This can be a phone call, FaceTime, or coffee. What's your schedule usually like? In the meantime, feel free to start working on three things. Number one, logging into your Mary Kay in touch. Number two, setting up your website. And third, setting up your pro pay. I will send videos on how to set those up. Now, that may sound like a lot just hearing it, but when it's broken down into steps, it simplifies her life. Make it easy on them. Don't have your new beauty consultant guessing what's next, right? So the company does a great job to give them their first steps. And when it's completed, it crosses it off. However, we must remember that we have to use multiple forms of communication to make the message clear and precise. Once the welcome appointment is set up, I always tell her this is her first of two conversations. Now, I didn't come up with this. One of my offsprings told me this. Now, the first is to break it into two parts. The first is going to go over the what. What can she be working on? What, guess what that goes over? Those first three steps I gave her in the initial text, right? I can't assume they've done any of those steps, to be honest. Maybe she's feeling like she couldn't complete ProPay or the website. So it's important that we circle back around. The other portion of the conversation will go over the how. How does she want to run her business? Now, before I go over any options, I discuss what she started for, how often does she see herself holding a session, how does she want to hold the session virtually or in person? Now, all of those things determine what I will go over. And so, yes, I use the company inventory video to back up my conversation, especially if she's going to leave and discuss it with her significant other or a decision maker. But once she's heard what her options are in discussing her feelings about carrying products on hand, we will then make a decision about her grand opening. And I can't tell you, this is key. I always say our best case scenario is that we have products on hand at the session for people not only to experience, but also to leave with it in hand. Our good scenario is that we hold the session, but the products haven't quite arrived yet. And what's our worst case scenario is to hold the session this week to get her first order in. Now, I encourage her again that starting is starting, right? We all know it's the start that stops most people. So let's start somewhere, right? I remind her I'm here and that she adds value no matter what she comes in with or doesn't come in with. This is more than enough in her first conversation, but it's important to leave with the what's next. Determining how long she needs to have a conversation with a spouse and setting up the time to follow up with her. Now, remember, new beauty consultants don't know what to expect, so it's up to us to support them and make them feel valued. I leave that conversation and ask if she could start working on her pretend wedding list. Now, I know a lot of you are already doing this, but I want them to star the ones who are the stars in their life. She's the life of the party, she's the manager, she's involved in everything. I also wanted to put a heart next to the ones who love her so much and she thinks will be a great grand opening hostess. Now in that waiting period, I'm very detailed and making sure that I'm posting about her in our unit Facebook page, maybe on my story, welcoming her to our Mary Kay family. 
I will also share with her a couple of appointments that I'm holding that she can shadow me on. Get them in your car, get them in your space, travel to them. This is also key. And really, it's what Mary Kay Ash asked of us. Once we have that follow-up conversation, we move the needle forward, no matter what that looks like. We book. We review the pretend wedding list. We get some sessions on her books. I invite her to a four-week new beauty consultant education every Monday night via Zoom. Now, this does not have to be taken in order, so I do not wait to invite her. This will, again, be one more step to inform her in a simple process. Our weekly education is constant, laid out with the next step tools. Plus, they receive the Mary Kay car sticker when they graduate. So these topics include things like the Great Start program, the app, social media, educational tools such as Mary Kay University, skincare confident, color confident, ready, set, keep selling, right? All those things are important. So at some point, once the grand opening is set, I like to talk about the career path. What does that look like? And what does it mean to be a senior to sport a red jacket and above? It depends on when I have this conversation, because if they were just on a certain new consultant training, it might have been the topic for the week. So don't wait for it to be the right time. She might be hungry to move forward. And plus, if she's created her wedding list, we've already started the process. So also in this conversation, I talked to her about more Salesforce leadership. I asked her really important questions like, what do you like in a leader? What is your best communication style? Do you have any expectations of me as your leader? Well, does this help answer seriously so much? This is where you need to step out of your systems. This is not a cookie cutter business. And we wanna make sure that we are helping set them up for success. Some want to have weekly accountability, some want more and some simply want less. So all of this is happening with me. Let me give you two simple tools that I'm doing on the back end of things. So number one, the new beauty consultant is receiving a gift for me in the mail welcoming in. This is a headband, a scrunchie, a pair of earrings, but this is key. It's along with a Mary Kay sample. That's right, I'm constantly attempting to bind them to the company and the products. I'm also sending them encouraging postcards for their first six weeks. So because we constantly recognize in our new weekly um, or in our weekly success events, who's earning consistency challenge jewelry and star consultants and beauty consultants who beat their best sales appointments, bookings, all of these pieces give me quick follow up conversations to keep the beauty consultant in the loop. We're meeting in person and virtually. That was a change for us, and it was the right one for my unit in my area. I love to get new consultants in the atmosphere as soon as possible. It's very foreign to those outside of Mary Kay, right? Like all the praising, the sashes, the queens, the list goes on. So this is where we start to see them transfer from simply having a Mary Kay business and the Mary Kay culture being in them. Don't lose out on this. Even if it's virtual, we know many start their Mary Kay business for connections, and you, my friend, we're called to connect them. Keep them in a simple process and you will surely see who is ready for more conversations and faster growth. To move along the career path, I've started to use Facebook Messenger as a system a little bit more versus other mediums. This is simply because they can hear my voice, my conversations have to be brief because it cuts me off after a minute, and honestly, you can add and remove people very easily. I don't do daily messages simply because when I do actually send a message, I want them to listen. I create albums on my unit Facebook page titled whatever the month is of company and unit promotions so it doesn't get lost in translations. Promote and focus on what you want to grow. Whatever that is, the number of Powered by Pink Achievers, Building Red, Sales, that is where I get the loudest about in my unit page and on social media. So back to the drawing board. Let's not change everything at once, but ask yourself, where do I need to step up my communication game? And how can I move my needle forward? Make sure to celebrate your new people. Thank you so much. Have a great seminar. Brooke. Wow. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Brooke, for sharing those best practices and tips for working with new beauty consultants and getting them off to a great start. Now, our next teacher is from the Emerald Seminar. She's a 10-time member of the Queen's Court of Personal Sales 
and a six-time member of the Queen's Court of Sharing, including once in the top 20. She led her unit to achieve seven unit circle appearances, including two times in the half million dollar circle of achievement and two times in the circle of excellence. And this year, she led her unit to the one million one hundred thousand dollar circle of excellence. Everyone, let's welcome independent executive senior sales director, Lindsay Fressler. She's here to teach how to implement effective strategies on developing new star team builders and sustaining them. Lindsay, you're up next. Good morning, sales directors. Wow, it is such an honor to be speaking to you today. My first time being asked to teach a class at seminar and I am completely humbled and grateful for this opportunity. Thank you, Mary Kay, for trusting me. I do not take it lightly. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my thought processes, my systems and strategies around developing and sustaining breads in your unit. I'm so excited to talk to you about this because I am 100% confident that focusing on developing red jackets and helping beauty consultants achieve their career path goals this year was a huge key to our first million dollar year. Okay, so if you've ever heard me teach, you know I will always talk a little bit about the head stuff before anything else. And that's because I truly believe that this business is about 90% mental and only about 10% skill. I want you to remember that whatever you focus on and give attention to will grow. So I wanna ask you, what is your self-talk like around developing Salesforce leaders? Do you tell yourself that you're a leader of leaders? Do you tell yourself that you are a master at developing new reds? Remember, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, you're absolutely right. So next, do you have a goal for the number of reds you want to develop this year? I want you to write that number down right now and keep it in front of you all year long because with a goal, you can get what you want. And without a goal, you just take whatever you get. At the beginning of this past seminar year, last July, I set a goal to develop 20 new reds and five new offspring sales directors within the seminar year. I had never achieved either of those milestones in my business before, even as a first time circle of excellence sales director last year. So I knew that if I was going to make a quantum leap from $650,000 in estimated unit production, to a million, it was gonna happen through developing Salesforce leaders. Because when you focus on developing people, production follows. I love the Mary Kay Ash quote that says, if you help other people get what they want, then you will get what you want. Isn't that one of the most beautiful parts of our business? That we get to help other people get what they want. And in doing so, it ultimately helps us achieve our goals too. So here's the deal. I didn't just focus on developing reds. I wanted continual growth and movement. So I did something I had never done before. I made a goals tracking sheet each and every single month, and I tracked all of our unit growth on them. So I want to show you this monthly tracking sheet from April of this year. This was the one and only month that our unit has ever been ranked number one in the United States. Y'all, this right here is how we achieved that number one ranking, a focus on unit growth and developing leaders. We literally hit every single one of these goals and actually exceeded every single one of them too. See, I set a goal to add 40 new unit members. You see this, one through 40. We actually added 43. I set the goal to have five new seniors and we had 12. I set the goal to have three new red jackets and we celebrated five. I honestly didn't even set a goal for team leaders because I didn't have room on this paper, but we added one new team leader and celebrated three new elite team leaders. I set a goal to have one new DIQ and we did just that along with debuting a new independent sales director out of our unit that same month. Lastly, I set a goal to have at least 13 qualified unit members, more so because it's Mary Kay's lucky number. And once again, I couldn't fit more on the paper. And y'all, we had 27. So I want to ask you, are you this specific with your goals and with your tracking? Because remember what you focus on grows. 
So I want to point out a couple of names to you here and just share a couple of stories with you to inspire you. You will see one consultant on here, Regina Furry. She promoted herself to senior consultant, then to red jacket and on to team leader and on target car driver in the month of April alone. Y'all, she started her business in February, earned her grand achiever career car in June, and just debuted as a new independent sales director on August 1st. Y'all, let me tell you about Regina. She is a warrior. Y'all, she has lupus, congestive heart failure. She is on oxygen. She has a pacemaker. She is an amputee who is wheelchair bound, and she worked many days from her bed. You guys sick. Y'all, she went from new consultant to car earning sales director in less than five months. My favorite quote that she shared with me recently was that her disability does not define her ability. Wow. Doesn't that make you want to ask yourself what kind of excuses you've been making for your own circumstances? I know it does for me. And I'm so grateful to Mary Kay Ash for creating an opportunity that would allow women like Regina to succeed on their own terms, even from bed if they had to. Oh, Regina, I love you. Another name you'll see is Jolene Countryman. Yo, know, she also started her business in February. She went on target for her career car in March and she had her 10 active team members lined up to submit for DIQ by the end of April. She earned her grand achiever career car in May and completed DIQ in one month, debuting as a new independent sales director on June 1st as the number one director in her debuting class only three months and nine days after starting her Mary Kay business. Jolene works full-time as a master sergeant in the U.S. Air Force. She is a breastfeeding mama to her baby boy, Tucker, and she's practically a single mama in the evenings because her husband is a recruiter for the Marine Corps and rarely gets home before nine o'clock each night. Can you just say, wow. I hope I am giving you all hope right now with these stories. Y'all, one other name that you're gonna see here is new independent sales director, Andrea Stone. In January, she was a senior consultant and she was anxiety ridden in a job where she was overworked and underappreciated. She made the decision to start sharing Mary Kay with others as a means to bless them with this amazing business opportunity, but also as a way for her to get out of a job that she was not happy in. Yeah, she completed her DIQ requirements during the month of April. And of these promotions that you saw here, many of them were from her unit because remember building people builds production. And when you help other people get what they want, you get what you want. Y'all, she celebrated two new seniors, one new red jacket and one new elite team leader and on-target car driver in April alone and earned her own great achiever career car in June and was able to walk away from that job to pursue her Mary Kate business full-time. Y'all, this is why we do what we do and why I do what I do. It's not just about reaching a goal on the scoreboard. It is about the lives that are changed in the process. Next, I want to show you another tracking sheet I made on July 1st of last year with a goal to develop 20 new reds and five new independent sales directors. In case you didn't notice, <laughs> we didn't quite hit either of those goals that I had set last year. We only developed 17 new reds instead of 20 and three new sales directors instead of five. But we still broke our record of the number of new reds and new independent sales directors developed in one year and largely because of that we did achieve our first million dollar year. Not only that, we exceeded it. Y'all, just like Mary Kay Ash said, if you shoot for the moon, even if you fail, you'll land among the stars, right? So I wanna challenge you right now, if you haven't already set a goal for the number of new reds and new sales directors you wanna develop this year, do it now, do it now, do it now, and then track it like a hawk. Next, I wanna share with you, how I focused on creating a culture of people moving along the career path in my unit this year and what that looked like. One of the first things I put into place was a strategy to celebrate and recognize movement along the career path. I know many of you likely have incentives for your team and for your unit for achieving different wholesale ordering goals each month. So I asked myself, how could I do that same exact thing 
but with a focus on team building instead. So I created a reward system where beauty consultants can earn a prize for each advancement along the career path. New senior beauty consultants get a pair of red earrings to match their red jacket. New reds get a personalized red hanger with their name on it to hang their new red jacket on. New team leaders earn themselves a pair of red shoes. New elite team leaders got a really cute red purse. And new DIQs could earn a crown ring that actually resembles the queen ring from Mary Kay. So instead of only incentivizing for wholesale orders, I began incentivizing movement of the career path and the results were explosive. Remember what you focus on grows. So then I celebrate them like crazy on my unit Facebook page and our weekly email blast that goes out to our unit members with announcements and recognition. And so that Facebook post would sound something like this. It would say promotion alert. Congrats to Susie Q who just became a senior consultant. Thanks to having her first active team member, Faith Hope. Susie Q is now eligible to earn 4% commission on her team. And she just earned herself a fabulous pair of red earrings to match her new red jacket. That is sure to be coming soon. I am so excited for you, Susie Q. The best is yet to come. So with every celebration, I share the perks of that promotion along with the prize that they earned from me for that achievement. So then other new consultants are wanting their name to be the one that we are celebrating next. Okay, next I wanna share with you a couple of ways that I ignited a movement within my unit this year. Y'all get this, <laughs> we literally added three, three new unit members in December. I've always heard in my sales director education classes that if you add five new unit members a month, that just maintains your unit size. And if you add 10 new unit members a month, that's how you create growth. So obviously I knew that three new unit members certainly wasn't going to get us to our million dollar goal, right? So in January, I decided to relaunch the pearls of sharing promotion to my entire unit. I had always offered pearls of sharing as an incentive to my new beauty consultants, but I hadn't offered them to my existing unit members in a while. So with Mary Kay launching the new pearl jewelry in January, I decided to give every beauty consultant in my unit an opportunity to earn them. This promotion was one where they could earn the pearl earrings with three sharing calls with me. We call these pink possibility chats. So I'll share more about that with you in a minute. Then they could earn the pearl bracelet when they held a total of six pink possibility chats with me that month. And lastly, they could earn the pearl necklace when they added a new qualified team member in January. I had my virtual assistant create images celebrating our pearl girls. And she would put up a shout out anytime a beauty consultant earned one of their pearl jewelry pieces to keep the promotion in front of them. So y'all in preparation for this class, I went to my unit Facebook group to do a search for Pearl Girls to remind myself of what I had offered the pearls for to share with you. And don't you know, every single beauty consultant who earned her pearl jewelry in January became a red this year. One of them who I just told you about, Andrea, even added eight personal team members that month from focusing on those pink possibility chats and went from senior beauty consultant to DIQ in the month of January alone. And today we are celebrating her as a car earning sales director. Andrea, I'm so proud of you. Y'all, that was all from relaunching the Pearls of Sharing promotion. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is this pink possibility chat I was talking about? So basically we just restructured our traditional sharing call where a beauty consultant and I would do a three-way phone call together with a prospective team member. I'm sure y'all know this, right? So instead of being more interview style where I was asking the questions of that new potential team member, instead, I would have the beauty consultant tell them ahead of time to think of five questions to ask about the Mary Kay business opportunity because that beauty consultant was learning how to answer the most commonly asked questions about a Mary Kay business. So using this pink possibility chat approach did a couple of things for us. Number one, I was able to tell potential team members that I was teaching and training my beauty consultants how to answer the most commonly asked questions about a Mary Kay business. 
So they genuinely came to me or came to us with good questions. And I think they felt less pressure because it was to help their friend or their beauty consultant with her education. Also, what I found was that I wasn't word vomiting about how awesome Mary Kay was all over people anymore. I'd realized that in my former interview style phone calls, I think sometimes I was honestly giving them too much information. I love that with these calls, I was only answering the questions they asked. So there were a few times people would literally ask me one or maybe two questions, and then they'd be ready to start their business. That's all they needed to know. It was so refreshing and honestly, so simple. And I'm happy to tell you that because of relaunching the Pearls of Sharing promotion and that intentional focus on teaching and equipping my beauty consultants on how to share the opportunity and how to answer the most commonly asked questions, we went from three new beauty consultants in December to 22 in January, 22 in February, 34 in March, which was our record at the time, then 43 in April, 40 in May, 27 in June and 22 in July from three to 20 plus every single month. I hope I'm giving y'all hope here. It's crazy to me what just a small shift in your focus plus a fun challenge can do for you. Now, something else I did to help us develop new reds and just shut down that mission to million was a designer handbag giveaway the last three months of the year. Thanks to my senior, Brittany Jenks, for this amazing idea. You see, we had just finished the $650,000 circle of excellence on March 31st. So that meant we had three months left to go to bring in another $350,000 in estimated unit production, which we had never done in three months time before. So when you want something you've never had, sometimes you have to be willing to do something you've never done. So on April 1st, I purchased two matching handbags and I issued out, out a challenge to my unit because I know when you focus on building people, production follows. So the challenge was this, when we achieved the goal of either 40 new unit members or 100 pink possibility chats in April, that I would give away both handbags, one to a beauty consultant and one to a customer. See, we incentivize customers by offering them a ticket in the handbag for doing a PPC with us, that pink possibility chat, and another ticket entered in if they decided to start their Mary Kay business. Beauty consultants could get entered in for each pink possibility chat they held with me, for each new team member they added, and for moving up the career path. So I was incentivizing both the desired result, which was adding new consultants to our unit and moving people up, but I was also then incentivizing the necessary action required to get the results, which was doing the pink possibility chats, right? And so don't you know, because I put this crazy, huge, audacious goal out there, we broke that record for the new highest number of new team members added in a single month with 43 new unit members. And y'all, that is how we were ranked number one in the US that month. I also believe if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> So I continued that handbag giveaway again in May and in June. And during those last three months of the seminar year, y'all, we welcomed 110 new beauty consultants into our unit and brought in over $450,000 in estimated unit retail production. Now that was $100,000 more over the crazy huge goal that we had originally set. And that helped us demolish that million dollar finish and to finish in the top of Emerald and the U.S. this year. To God be the glory. Y'all, so please believe I relaunched the Pearls of Sharing promotion for my entire unit again this month, just like we did in January, to go along with the company's Kate Spade promotion. And I cannot wait to see the Salesforce leaders that emerge from that. Lastly, I want to give you some insight into how I help my new beauty consultants get their businesses up and running to help create that environment for growth right out of the gate. When a new consultant joins my unit, I try to book her launch party with it within like one and a half to two weeks so that her launch party is held within her first 15 days to maximize that great start time frame. I send her an invitation and a script to send out to her friends and family, and I tell her to start inviting immediately. Now, one thing I do that I truly believe made a huge impact on our massive growth this year 
was I made the decision to mail samples for my unit. Yes, I pay for and mail the samples for my unit members. Y'all, my thought process was this. I used to drive up to three, four hours each way to help a new beauty consultant launch her business. So now instead of investing expenses like gas and party supplies, I instead shifted my investment to samples and shipping. See, I believe that what sets Mary Kay apart is that we don't just throw catalogs at people and say, hey, I sell this stuff. Do you want to buy it? Instead, Mary Kay Ash taught us to let our customers try before they buy and to educate them on the products as they're trying them. So I just adapted what we used to do at an in-person party to this new virtual world we were living in and began sharing the products and the opportunity virtually instead. What this allowed me to do was to have the opportunity to work exactly the same with all of my new beauty consultants, whether they lived five minutes or five hours away from me. Now, I'll be honest, I almost used to dread team building with people out of state because then I would have to search for an adoptive sales director and hope and pray that my beauty consultants would actually attend her trainings and that I could keep her engaged. Now I could work closely with all of my new unit members, no matter where they lived and keep my new beauty consultants in my hip pocket, like Mary Kay Ash taught us to do. So we hold that launch party. And from that launch party, many of my new beauty consultants are walking away, not only with product sales, but oftentimes with their first team member or two or three, because we talk about the Mary Kay Easter option. And of course the bring your besties coupons. And their guests can see firsthand just how easy it is to work a Mary Kay business now that we're including working our businesses virtually as well. But that's not it. At every party, I then talk about the upcoming virtual parties we have for our guests to attend, like glamour sessions and multi-masking parties, bingo, new product previews. And then we rebook their guests to come to some of those upcoming events. So what that does is a couple more things. Number one, it gives us an opportunity to help layer our beauty consultants, customers for them. Now, I've always heard that it takes on average three layers of someone hearing about the Mary Kay opportunity before they decide to start their business. Of course, this is based on averages, but because yeah, with the $30 e-start option, I feel like we have more people decide to start their Mary Kay business on the spot now from a party than ever before. But Let's just say they come to a launch party for a new consultant, and then they agree to attend two upcoming sessions. Well, there's their three layers. And that's where so many of our new unit members have come from this year. You know, many of our strongest beauty consultants right now are those who attended several virtual sessions before deciding to join. Never in the history of in-person parties have we had the ability to layer our customers that many times without ever having to leave the comfort of our own homes. So this system of booking, sending samples, and rebooking has not only helped my new beauty consultants start their businesses strong, it has also helped them remain strong and has created so much stronger retention in my unit as well. Y'all think about it. Our customers are now getting to try basic skincare at a launch party. So we just do the miracle set and microdermabrasion at a launch party. That's it. Then they get to try makeup. Then they get to try some of our masks. Then they get to attend a bingo party. And then they get to learn about targeted solutions that they never would have heard about otherwise, unless you literally drove to their house five different times, right? So now we're building our customer bases deep and wide, just like Mary Gash taught us to. And my beauty consultants are seeing more sales and more loyalty with their customers than ever before because their customers are now using Mary Kay head to toe. And y'all, a beauty consultant who is selling this product and developing a team tends to to remain more likely to be a beauty consultant and to stay. It makes them stickier, right? So this investment of sending samples not only catapulted us into having our first million dollar year, developing those 17 new new reds and three new independent sales directors, now four as of August 1st. Y'all, I think about it like this. The work I am doing today to help my unit members build their businesses is going to continue to strengthen our unit's efforts because we're able to layer our customers unlike ever before and build rock solid relationships and loyalty with them. It is truly the most beautiful thing. And I swear it's never been 
so fun or so rewarding working my Mary Kay business than it is right now. And think about it, y'all. That means the investment right now is paying you over and over again forever. So lastly, if you're sitting here thinking, I don't even have anyone in my unit that I think would want to move into red right now. I want to remind you of the quote. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Y'all, you did not become a sales director on accident. You are the best team builder in your unit. Please believe that even running a million dollar unit, I am still the number one team builder in my unit by a landslide. So if you don't have anyone to move into red right now, then you personally go find them. Make it your goal to do as many pink possibility chats as you possibly can this month and then help those new beauty consultants get a strong start to their businesses. And you can single handedly change the entire trajectory of your unit by making the decision to work personally. As our dear founder, Mary Kay Ash often said, the speed of the leader is the speed of the gang. So if you've been given this gift of Salesforce leadership, then for God's sake, lead sister. I am praying that something I shared today will bless you in your business. And I cannot wait to celebrate you as a top red developer. And I am believing that you are going to have your best year ever this year. I'll see you soon in Atlanta. Bye friends. Oh my goodness. Wow. That was excellent, Lindsay. Thank you for giving us those easy to implement tips and goals for building and sustaining reds. Okay. Now it's time for a quick stretch break. You've been taking notes, listening, and learning for over an hour. Take a break, take a breath, and get yourself something to drink. And we'll be back in five minutes. It's a quick break because we have so much more education coming up soon. Okay, so who's ready for more? This next class is called Empowering and Coaching Others to Help Them Achieve Their Dreams. And we have the perfect teacher for this class. She has achieved gold circle sat status 10 times and diamond circle status twice. She is motivated by helping others believe they can have unlimited success. Everyone, Please welcome from the Diamond Seminar Independent National Sales Director, Lisa Allison. Lisa is going to teach a class called Empowering and Coaching Others to Achieve Their Dreams. 
I am so excited to be here with you, sales directors. I want to open with a Mary Kay quote from our founder, the basis for everything I'm sharing with you today. Quote, she says, during the early years of Mary Kay Cosmetics, we didn't always set the world on fire. The company you see today was created in spite of many disappointments and setbacks. But I envisioned a company, she said, in which any woman could compete against her own best effort and thus become as successful as she wanted. From the very beginning, the doors of our company were open wide for any woman who believed that hard work and determination could conquer failure. Any woman who had the courage to dream and who was willing to pay the price, end of quote. That's page 12 of Miracles Happen. I'm going to give you stories, examples, ideas, tips, but first allow me to answer some questions before we dig in, like what does empowering others mean? Why is it important? What are some actions you might implement to help you empower your unit members? As a Mary Kay Independent Sales Director, what, what does empowering others mean and why is it important? Well, number one, empowering others means giving others the power or authority to do something themselves. Does that hit you between the eyes like a Mack truck? Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. You got your pins ready? Empowering others means giving others the power or authority to do something themselves. How many of you want highly independent beauty consultants in your unit? We'll talk about that. But first, my area's number one sales director, Sarah Pinella from Connecticut, enlists her unit members to record Zooms for her unit with topics like makeup for beginners, featuring a former police officer, and social media tips with a professional horse trainer and equestrian, everyday people with everyday tips. Which leads me to point number two. No great leader can do everything herself. My top three Cadillac sales directors are out of state. In other words, they are not local to me. Why? It's so simple. I built my business in Houston, Texas, and all it took was one hurricane, just one, to help me have one of those duh moments. <laughs> my business and my local beauty consultants businesses shut down. What, during that hurricane, it was crazy because of the stupid weather. Now, I'm not a business genius, but I had a duh moment. Can I control the weather? Of course not. Can I control how many people I ask if they know someone out of state who they think would like to try Mary Kay products? Newsflash, we have zero territories in the USA, zero. Mary Kay Ash said, our number one purpose is what? To give the opportunity away. She often said three simple and strategic words, pass it on. It took one hurricane for me to realize point number two in empowering others. No great leader can do everything herself. So where do we go from that? Number three. I wanted to create a unit culture of independent beauty consultants working, holding, selling, and team building appointments on their very own from the very beginning. I'm going to say that again. I wanted to create a unit culture of independent beauty consultants working, holding, selling, and team building appointments on their own from the very beginning. Mary Kay Ash's words I opened with, quote, during the early years of Mary Kay, we didn't always set the world on fire. The company you see today, she said, was created in spite of many disappointments and setbacks. But she said, I envisioned a company that was going to make women rich. No. <laughs> she said, I envisioned a company in which any woman could compete against her own best effort. Number three, I wanted to create a unit culture of independent beauty consultants working, holding, selling, and team building appointments on their own from the very beginning. 
I'll share with you how to do that. Number four, here is what empowering does. And if you have even a slight Mary Kay pulse, you're going to love this. But wait, these are goal poster quality. You are so going to want to write these down. Empowering others, number one, encourages ownership. Number two, increases autonomy. Number three, inspires critical thinking and finally creates an urge for a solutions oriented mindset. I'm going to say that one more time. Empowering others, number one, encourages ownership. Two, increases autonomy. Three, inspires critical thinking and finally creates an urge for a solutions oriented mindset. Warning label. Empowering beauty consultants could result in consultants with a higher level of self-confidence, an increase in selling and unit team building, an emergence of teams of reds, unit strength and momentum. If that's not what you're looking to do, turn this class off right now. <laughs> As a Salesforce leader, the moment you've been waiting for, how can you empower your unit members to work their businesses on their own? How can you create a unit culture of independence? First, communicate your vision clearly and invite your unit members to participate with their unique talents and strengths. Mary Kay Ash said, quote, from the very beginning, okay, brace yourselves, here comes her vision. From the very beginning, she said, the doors of our company were open wide for any woman who believed that hard work and determination would conquer what? Failure. Thank you, Mary Kay, for giving me this amazing topic. In 23 years of mentoring women, what would you say most women want to conquer? Failure. We don't want to be a failure as a mother, right? We don't want to be a failure as a wife or as a good friend. What was Mary Kay Ash's vision? That hard work and determination could conquer failure. How's that for a slice of unit culture? So how do we do that? It is such critical thinking to foster open communication and sharing of information and ideas. We're going to talk about specific questions to ask in a, in a minute, but another how along our road to empowering others is, and I bet $1 million you've heard this before, but I'm going there because this is what our brilliant founder, Mary Kay Ash, was looking for from every conversation she had with someone. Ready? Empowering is encouraging your unit members to identify their why. Why did they start? I like to ask, what gave you the courage to say yes and order your starter kit? And what do they want from their Mary Kay business? What is that? Well, that is a simple two question process to find out what motivates her. Encourage her to identify her why, and then what does she want from her Mary Kay business? An easy way to remember that is why and want, why and want. Empowering can also be to encourage personal accountability for how much time and effort they'll put into working their business. Confession. I'm a bit of a slowly recovering, rabid self-starter. <laughs> I'm one of those unique people who is shut down by the dreaded A word, accountability. But guess what? Most people in the world today thrive on a little personal accountability. How do you find out which one she is? Let me ask you a question. Uh, but hold on a minute, because every pointed question you ask someone to get to the meat and potatoes of your conversation should begin with, hey, let me ask you a question. And a pause. So how do you find out if she's motivated or shut down by the concept of accountability? The magic question. Let me ask you a question. Hey, are you open to a little accountability or does accountability shut you down? 
Pretty simple, right? <laughs> the Harvard Business Review recently talked about accountability. They said, quote, accountability is not simply taking the blame when something goes wrong. It's not a confession. Accountability is about delivering on the commitment. They went on to say it's responsibility to an outcome, not just a set of tasks. It's taking initiative with thoughtful, strategic follow through, end of quote. In other words, the outcome, the why. Not the steps or the task, it's the why that keeps people accountable. Second step in how to empower. As a Salesforce leader, this is the fine balance of being a sales director. Like it's not a razor sharp equation, but a bit of a gray area. And that's okay. Honestly, if everything in our business were as simple as two plus two equals four, we would be so bored. Number two is know and practice discernment. Some people learn faster than others, and everyone has different levels of confidence. We have to know when to step in and when to let our people fly free. Who doesn't love and remember just about every moment of the musical Grease, right? But what we probably remember most is the last scene. When Danny shows up at the last picnic in a letter sweater to impress who? Sandy. The crowd parts, and there she is. I bet you can even see the black outfit she had on and how sexy she looked. But what brought him to his knees was her gray area statement, feel your way. That's it. In an emotional sense, the fine balance of art, the art of empowering your, your directors and empowering your people is to feel your way. Again, emotionally, <laughs> practice discernment, to, which to me is simply to become a powerful listener. Listen to her. I basically run my business from a spiral notebook. Every day gets a fresh new page for my six most important things. And when I begin a conversation with someone, they get a fresh piece of paper and I write down what I'm hearing. I listen. There's no cookie cutter way to listen. Just feel your way. <laughs> Number three. Number three in how to empower. Have an intentional focus on teaching and transferring skills to unit members. It's super important to support a learning environment where it's okay to make mistakes while you're working and growing. This helps people gain experience and confidence. Mary Kay Ash called it, they earn while you learn. They learn, pardon me. Let me say that again. They learn while you earn. You knew it. They learn while you earn. If I could do one, if I could have one more 30 second conversation with my late mentor, senior national Darlene Bergren, I would say to her, thank you for teaching me to never go to an appointment alone. That was the number one thing she taught me, and guess what? It worked. New Cadillac sales director Tracy Patochny of Hershey, Pennsylvania, and I met at a party. And the only reason I asked her if she would be willing to hear more about our opportunity, because she was that person at the party, you know what I mean? The only reason I asked her was because I had a new beauty consultant attending that party with me, and she was sitting right there. I thought Tracy would be good at this, but she intimidated me too much. Because I listened to my mentor, Darlene, I never went to a party alone. And today, I never go to a party alone ever. Especially now, when we're mostly virtual. Are you kidding me right now? It's so simple to have a new beauty consultant with me at a party. I have become an expert at another level of unit culture. I believe it's not an option to provide opportunities for my unit members to observe me holding a selling or team building appointment. No one, no one, not me, not any NST or any top sales director or even videos on Mary Kay and Touch can teach your people better than you. You are invested, but are you equipping them? 
are you showing them? When I say you, I mean you. Don't ask another NSD or top sales director to be included in their appointment. It's about your people connecting with you. She watches you do it, then she does it, and you watch or offer tips, and then she does it on her own. And then guess what she does? She begins to bring her new team members to her appointments. Remember the story of meeting Cadillac director Tracy Patochny at a party where I brought a new beauty consultant with me? Guess what Tracy did from the very beginning? She said to her team, you have to come with me to my next party. That's simply called empowering. And at the beginning of this class, I asked an important question of you sales directors. I asked you how many of you want highly independent beauty consultants in your unit? Never. Go to an appointment alone, ever. Even a business reveal, which is what I'm calling a business debut, a launch party, or first party now, a Mary Kay business reveal, a brand new beauty consultant, or even a prospective beauty consultant, tunes in with me, always. As I wrap up and give you some specific questions to ask, as an effective empowerment sales director, let me ask you a question. How many of you would rather listen to a podcast today than read a book? You know, Mary Kay Ash said to listen to the radio, specifically the station called WIIFM. What does that stand for? What's in it for me? Which brings me to my next step on how to empower, help unit members, especially new beauty consultants, understand what's in it for them rewards and bonuses of the awesome Great Start program, star consultant prizes, rewards for team building and moving along the career path. Same for Reds. WIIFM is a station of choice, the billboard top station. One last thought on unit culture. Create an environment where everyone can win and that celebrates both big and small successes. I'm gonna let you run with that thought. You guys are sales directors. In closing, what does coaching people look like? As a coach, you'll want those you are communicating with to walk away from every interaction with you, with your goal, your vision. So let's break it down. You want those you're talking with to walk away with, number one, more trust in you as a Salesforce leader, two, more confidence in herself and her ability to be successful. Number three, more hope for the future. Let me repeat that. You want those who you're talking with to walk away with more trust in you as a Salesforce leader, more confidence in herself and her ability to be successful, and more hope for the future. Okay, start your engines. Get your pen and paper ready or your laptop and here are the questions to ask. Yay! Earlier today, I shared with you how important it is to what? It was a curveball you saw coming because we talk about it a lot. Knowing their why. That can help them stay personally motivated to work their own business and therefore be independent. Here are some examples. First, listen for the goal. Ask her, what do you want to achieve? What are you aiming for in the short term, midterm or long term? Why is this important? And what will it look like? Explore their reality. What's happening now? You might ask her, what have you done so far towards your goal? What did you learn from this experience? What are your main concerns or what might be holding you back? Ask for solutions. What resources or ideas do you have to help you with this issue? What are all the different ways you could approach this? What else could be done or is there someone else who might be able to help? What do you need in order to achieve your goal? 
then decide what's next. Which of these options seem best to you and would take you closest to your goal? What's the next step in coaching? What do you need from me in order to help you stay on track? A quick review. Listen for her goal. Explore her reality. Ask her for solutions and decide what's next. Most of all, ask. In closing, the objective of the sales director class was to encourage sales directors to develop people by empowering them to lead themselves, plus implement effective coaching and the transfer of skills to their unit members. So my final question with a mental shift thought, are you leading yourself with an and mentality? Or are you leading yourself with an or mentality? What is this? Well, the and mentality is basically, well, let's see, I could become a pink Cadillac sales director and earn a top director trip and be a great wife and mom, community leader, churchgoer, volunteer. Instead of, I could be a great mom, volunteer, community leader, a great friend, or I could earn a pink Cadillac and perhaps a top director trip. Thank you, Tracy, for touching me, for sharing this mental shift. It's time to tear up that or mentality. Mary Kay Ash said, quote, from the very beginning, the doors of our company were open wide for any woman who believed that hard work and determination could conquer failures. Any woman who had the courage to dream and who was willing to pay the price. Have a great seminar experience. Thanks, everyone. Wow. Thank you so much, Lisa, for teaching us how to develop and empower others. Thank you for motivating us to transfer those coaching skills to others. Okay. So the following segment is going to be fantastic. It's called Tips from the Top. And we have four incredible top sales director teachers sharing their best selling and team building tips. We have a stellar lineup. It's going to be fast and furious, so get your note-taking skills ready to go. So first up, we have a teacher from the Ruby Seminar. She is a nine-time member of the Queen's Court of Personal Sales and an 11-time member of the Queen's Court of Sharing, including six times in the top 20. She led her unit to achieve 11 unit circle appearances, including once in the half million dollar circle of achievement and seven times in the circle of excellence and twice in the one million dollar circle of excellence. Everyone, please welcome independent elite executive senior sales director, Heather Daniel Kent. Hey guys, I'm Heather Daniel Kent and I am super excited to share with you three of my strategies that help me continue to make progress as we all strive for the top. I don't believe in status quo, same old, same old. It's just not an option for me. And I know it isn't for you either. So tip number one, oh, here we go. It starts with an honest look at where you are using logic and numbers. And I love that you've got to know where you are and you must know the target in which you're aiming for. And Lindsay did share a little bit about that. And I love it. So like, just close your eyes and pretend you're swimming in an ocean. You wouldn't keep them closed and just start swimming. You'd sight the shore you, and you continue to check it as you swim, making sure that the course corrections that are needed. Okay. So that's why I use numbers. I want to know what the target is and then what the course correction needs to be. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna give you my cheat sheet on all things numbers. Whether you are looking to build a big producing unit or a big producing national area, and is what I actually meant there. Numbers are literally my obsession. They stop me from going up and down that emotional roller coaster. Been there? Um, okay, so the first one is, if you're looking to build a premier level career car, Equinox level, 70 non-T status unit members is what you need. So all of these numbers are non-T status. 
100 is what you want to look at to reach the, the status of King Cadillac. 150 is going to be your benchmark to reach that half million. 200 is really what you want to shoot for for achieving that top sales director trip. 300 is the ultimate goal to reach that 1 million estimated retail production. Now, if you're looking to build a national area, which I am, um, my numbers tell me that one out of every 10 new unit members will become a red jacket. Okay, one out of every 10. One in every five red jackets becomes a sales director. So when I'm running my numbers, I figure on average about one in 50 new unit members becomes a sales director. What I love about numbers is that they can be trusted as a great estimate. What I love about these numbers is that whatever your goal is, whether it's a big, fat, juicy, productive and unit or, and or national area, the numbers tell us that the answer is growth. Okay, you've heard me say it. Production alone can be a liar. Um, at the very minimum, it just doesn't even tell the entire story. Sometimes production doesn't come immediately, even though our layers are spot on, our volume is excellent. And if you judge your activity based on your production alone, it can totally lie. And it starts telling you like, you're not working hard enough or you're not a good enough leader. And those are big fat fibs, okay? Many of our answers can be found in the simple math, the math of new agreements. Okay, that's tip number one, getting very, very clear on our numbers. The honest truth about where we are, honest truth about where we are, where our target is, and then the gap in between. The gap in between is wh where we wanna concentrate our efforts. Okay, tip number two, when we get laser focused on adding new, we need to create systems that enable us to be duplicatable and systems to handle the increased volume. You're probably going to need to start the momentum yourself with your personal team building efforts. But if you want to turn it into a movement, you're going to need some running buddies. The Red Jacket focus is paramount. I could talk for hours about Red Jackets. It turns the addition into multiplication. So you want to ask yourself a couple of questions, and I want you to spend some time answering them for yourself. Spend your thinking time with these. And I'm going to give you some examples on how I do it. But the secret sauce is identifying how you are going to do it. So first question, how do you personally approach the team building process? Because I spent most of my business recruiting on personality. Uh, you can't teach personality. you got to get way more systematic. Second question, how do you teach your people to team build? I am a ginormous advocate for the layering sheet, which is basically just a glorified checklist, but it tracks your full circle work. It both your personal recruiting and then with your emerging red jackets, because monkey see, monkey do. How I recruit them is a major filter on how they will approach team building. Lindsay's class on creating reds and pearl girl calls, amen, amen, amen. It was genius. Okay, how are we educating them? Just go watch Brooks class because it was awesome on new consultant training. Okay, how are you encouraging them and recognizing them? Okay, next question. How are you opening them up to experience all that this opportunity has for them? I got a checklist for that too. And I call it a new beauty consultant layering sheet. And it just makes sure that I'm taking them through all of the steps of being a new consultant and really introduces them to the basics, the booking, the coaching, the selling, the customer service, and the team building from the very beginning. I'm so extremely passionate about my new consultants knowing all of the ways that we make money, knowing the marketing plan and what's available to them. And I know that sounds like sort of like, duh, Heather, uh, but my new thing is, as I have learned that preparedness creates professionalism and professionalism increases our capacity and we must increase our capacity if growth is the goal. So you got to get prepared with those simple duplicatable systems. Okay. Lastly, tip number three. Help develop people and sales force leaders. I'm going to get real excited right now. So two things that we did this year that had a huge impact on turning the momentum that we had into a complete movement. And the first one was our paid setters program. 
Second was our small groups. So first, pace setters, what I did that was different this time is we joined with some other top units and we combined our talents. I love that they got to see a bigger playing field. They got to hear training from different perspectives and the accountability with other sales directors, their peers, and the accountability of the weekly recognition. And of course, we use the tried and true IPA sheet. Can you really go wrong with counting potential income producing activity? The answer is no. Okay, small groups. Guys, this is where we took it to the whole nother level. And as a woman that wants to help develop leaders of leaders, handing the reins to my offspring sales directors was invaluable. They took, it'll make me emotional. Woo! They took beauty consultants, red jackets and DIQs under their wings. And what they did, they developed a culture of community, of family, accountability. And I'm sitting back and I'm watching my offspring grow in confidence and really stepping into their unique power. These small groups were essential in creating the esprit de corps that we have in our future national area. These have been the two biggest game changers for me. But here's the secret. I didn't know that going in. We tried a lot of things last year. I did not tell you about the stuff that didn't work. It doesn't make for that hot of a class. Those are just happened to be two of the spaghetti noodles that stuck to the wall. Sometimes you got to get creative and you got to try different things to see what works. So here's your permission to just throw that perfectionism mindset of, I have to know it will be successful before I put all the time and effort in. You're never going to know unless you try. You must unleash your creative juices, your independence, and your uniqueness. I don't want you to be a copy paste sales director. I want you to be unique. I want you to be special. I want you to be different. I want you to create new ideas, new ways of doing the basics while staying true to Mary Kay and who you are and what kind of sales director you desire to be. So dump all of the, I should, I used to, the way it's always been, I was taught, replace with it with, I think it would be fun to try. I wonder if it would work too. And then the most important question, how will I teach this when I start getting results? It causes you to be mindful and intentional about creating the duplicatable aspect. My challenge to all of us is to make our personal mark because someone's dreams are attached to ours and I don't intend on letting them down. So join me in taking back our personal power and leading well so that others can follow. Have a great seminar. Wow. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Heather. Wasn't she brilliant? And I hope you took a lot of notes. Okay. Our second teacher is from the Emerald Seminar. She's a five-time member of the Queen's Court of Personal Sales and a four-time member of the Queen's Court of Sharing, including once in the top 20. She led her unit to achieve five unit circles and once in the circle of excellence. And this year, she led her unit to the $1 million circle of excellence. Ladies, please welcome Independent Executive Senior Sales Director, Robin Barnwell. Hello, directors. It is an honor. It's a privilege to be able to share with you how I build offspring sales directors. I am Independent Executive Senior First Time Million Dollar Sales Director, Robin Barnwell. And even though I am an executive sales director, I'm a beauty consultant first and foremost. You see, my personal work is my number one priority. I lead by example. I work my Mary Kay business the Mary Kay Ash way. It's all about people and love. It's not about profit and loss. I believe it is important for my unit members to see me working my business full circle, booking, coaching, selling, and team building with integrity. I set right now passionate goals every single month and work towards them every single day. I am not just teaching my unit members what to do, but I am showing them exactly how to do it. This example inspires them and boosts their confidence so they can duplicate their leader. Leading by example, my commitment to my personal work and achieving a gold medal 
every month is how I continue to build my personal unit while leading a top unit. It is also how I ranked in the top three court of sharing this year. The new faces, the new customers, the new referrals, the new team members build new energy, excellence, and excitement to my business. I look for unit members who want more. More can mean additional income, personal growth, and positive relationships with positive people in a positive environment. I work my business closely with Salesforce leaders who have at least two to three of these characteristics. Already successful outside of their Mary Kay business, busy, you know we love busy people, coachable, positive, and ready to win right now. I look for three team members to gold medal with me monthly. After achieving my gold medal 11 months out of the last seminar year and bronze medal one month, I know that a gold medal can 360 your unit. Mary Kay Ash said, you need five to maintain and five to grow. So go and get your gold medal. Unit size really matters. I do not want to miss anyone who's ready for advancement. Sometimes who we think will won't and who we think won't will. Therefore, I invite all with my megaphone voice, it is up to her or him to raise their hand and say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I provide support for my unit by hosting individual coaching sessions for those who are ready to win right now. And together, we plan their work so they can work their plan. Mary Kay Ash said, behind every achievement, large or small, lies a plan. So if you really want to get things done, the sooner you learn how to plan, the better. I find places for them to win daily. Daily wins, even if they're small, builds their confidence. I welcome them to borrow my confidence by shadowing me at virtual facials, parties, and sharing appointments. I earn while my team members learn. Then I watch them a couple of times in action, working their business. Afterwards, we have a coaching session to strengthen their skills. And I believe that most people want to be a part of something that is bigger than them. So I cast a vision of where it is that I'm going and how I'm taking others with me. I share how their personal goal fits into our God-sized unit goal. I ask them to paint a vivid picture of what it is going to feel like. What is it going to look like? What is it going to mean to you personally and financially when your goal is accomplished? Because the real win is helping others to grow in their confidence, have courage, and have choices in their life. I put them in the space of other Salesforce leaders that have been where they want to go. Reds, sales directors, and national sales directors who can stretch their mind, stretch their belief. I share the importance of vision boards, goal posters up everywhere, all over the house, and tracking boards. We know that a track number grows. Having an affirmation is strongly encouraged in my unit, especially for reds and above. I suggest they write it out until it is memorized and say it all throughout the day. The affirmation is a reminder of who they are and where they are going, despite what it may look like. Breathing belief into my unit members comes naturally. Positivity is one of my top strengths. Encouragement is my God-given gift. I say these four words to them often that Mary Kay Ash mom said to her, you can 
do it. Daily, I share motivational posts and text messages. However, they cherish the handwritten cards from me. The individual conversations are the most impactful. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you really care. I truly get to know who she or he is. I learn about their family and what they need. I find out what the dream is on the inside. The individual conversation leads to making close connections and building lifelong relationships. Communicate often with your team members, even when you may not feel like it. They need to hear their Salesforce leader's voice and belief in them. Now, my best advice to sales directors, are you ready? Train your brain to think positive, to think big and to expect more. What are you reading? What are you listening to? I always have a theme song that speaks to me and a focal scripture. We talk to ourselves more than anyone. What is your self-talk? What are you saying to yourself? I speak affirmations as though it had already happened. Who is in your circle? Are they lifting you up with the words of life or are they bringing you down? Daily, I do a mental dump exercise. I draw a vertical line down the middle of the paper and I write all my thoughts and concerns in one column. All the negativity, fears, past, failures, concerns, even if they are tiny, they must come out. In the other column, I write a truth, positive thought, scripture, or a quote to combat and cancel the negative one. Prior to this exercise, I may feel stressed, overwhelmed, worried, confused, stuck, or emotional. However, let me tell you, at the completion of this activity, I feel so free and so light. I have clarity for my goals and I'm ready to fly high. Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny, but it all starts with your mind. Thank you so much, Robin. What a pleasure to hear from you today. Okay, our next teacher is also from the Emerald Seminar. She led her unit to achieve six unit circle appearances, including three times in the half million dollar circle of achievement and two times in the circle of excellence. And she led her unit to the $1 million circle of excellence as well. Everyone, please welcome Independent Senior Sales Director, Audrey detesco Nickel. Hello, I am so excited. I am Million Dollar Independent Sales Director, Audrey Nickel, and I'm so humbled and blessed to share with all of you today. Okay, I have a question for you. Lean in, get close. What are you saying to you? No, really, like what do you say to yourself daily, weekly, monthly? You know, we are so great at building our own people with loads of affirmations, but do you affirm yourself, really? Let me tell you why. This is so important. For years, I did half million. And every time that I did half million, I had set the goal for that year to do trip. But each time that I set the goal to do trip, guess what happened? That little voice came in my head and said, you've set that goal before. That's not going to happen. Keep dreaming, sister. Have y'all ever done that? <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one. I have a seven-year-old son, a five-year-old daughter, and another baby on the way. 
And I always think, you know, would I ever hold my child's face after she told me her goal and say to her, Mila, dream on sister, because that is not going to happen. Absolutely not. But we actually do that to ourselves daily. And I believe that God has placed significant callings inside each of us. He has given us the ability to choose the dialogue we believe and respond to. When we allow our thoughts to go unchecked, a steady drip of lies cements the wrong patterns within our minds, building a wall of bad beliefs. Think of it this way. When lies are not confronted, callings are not fulfilled. Can you imagine? How are the people closest to you, your kids, your parents, spouse, friends, suffering because of the lies that you believe? Because the voice that you believe will determine the future you experience. This is my 13th year in business and my 11th year as a sales director. And a few years ago, I found myself in the middle. Are you in the middle? <laughs> the middle is not very glamorous. Let's be honest. The middle is the, are we there yet? <laughs> part of the journey. And I believe one of the most underestimated stages of our growth. I truly believe that in the middle is where you really find out what is in the middle of you. Y'all, what is in the middle of you? Think about it this way. The beginning is where our heart shouts, let's go, right? We're so excited. This is where the fun begins. But the beginnings don't last long. But for a moment in time, they serve to propel us forward with high hopes and expectations. The middle is where static happens and where our once clear commitments are now compromised by circumstances that try to confuse and drown out the choices we had made. That is why I believe in the middle, we need to learn to stay tuned to the station where we last heard God speak to us. We need to leave the dial alone and reposition ourselves into a place of obedience that will allow us to regain reception. What always sobers me is that those who quit somewhere in the middle did not get an exemption card from the cost that period incurred. They still had to pay a price for the process, but because they quit, they never got the prize. The view from your mountaintop is worth it, but if you want to see it, you will have to learn to navigate your middle. So let's together identify the middle you are currently facing. Reduce the static in your life and commit to carry on climbing. Two years ago, I discovered my miracle in the middle. I am so grateful to share with you. Our team did prestige and then 1,025,000 this year in estimated unit retail production. When I set the goal and that voice tried to come in, I said, I made an appointment for you or cancel, cancel, cancel. I will take that immediate thought to God in my quiet time, not right in the middle of the day when I'm teaching a new beauty consultant. Nobody has time for what the enemy wants to speak. 
And let's be honest, the enemy only fights those who pose a threat. Next time the enemy wants to remind you of your shortcomings, I sure hope you remind him of all of your victories. I trashed my home with my goal and I made sure that it was in front of me every single day. Pick a hashtag for the year and put it on everything for your team. Protect your space. Stay away from negative people and protect your energy. Want to go to the top? Think like the top women do in our business. Stop asking them what activity they are doing and start asking them how they think and what they are reading. I promise you, it will make all the difference. When you set a goal, you need to be bold, like really bold. I mean, you tell your team with courage, it better be a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. It should make you want to puke. Actually, I did puke all year. That was from morning sickness, not my goal. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, right? The goal that makes you so uncomfortable. When you do, I promise you that you will take your team with you. Paint the picture through your education. Our theme this year was a million dreams. And I painted them a picture at the beginning of the year that if every single one of them could choose a personal goal to run after, then together we could accomplish million with all our efforts combined. I asked them for that specific goal. I wrote it down and I kept them accountable. If someone wants red on your team, are you sitting down with them specifically and asking her, why she wants red, getting to the emotion of what it'll do for her family and having her work from that place. Do you make it special when someone becomes a red? I love our red debuts. They get a special red box to open in front of everyone. Their family and friends get to be there and everyone in the room affirms them. They always leave with their hearts full and their hands even fuller with many gifts. Be consistent and create consistency for your team. It's important and it will make all the difference. When COVID hit in March of 2020, I started doing virtual parties and I'm still doing those same parties on those same nights of the week today. Work from your joy zone, delegate. So you do the things that you specifically love and hand over the things that you don't. And love your people big. My people know I love them. And they know it is not attached to their achievements. Lastly, don't let a battle that you are afraid to fight keep you from a victory that is already won. Go back to work. You are not alone. I want you to see just how far you have already come and just how much more I believe God has in store for you. He wants you to arrive at your destination with the seed your storm has given you, ready to be sown into the lives of others. I love you all, and I'm believing in your miracle in the middle. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much for sharing, Audrey. Okay, our last teacher is from this Emerald Seminar, and she's not able to be here with us today. Oh, no, she is here. Actually, she is an amazing teacher, and we know she, you will be able to hear her, um, uh, be excited to hear her teach. She's an eight-time member of the Queen's Court of Personal Sales and an eight-time member of the Queen's Court of Sharing, including eight times in the top 20.
She led her unit to achieve seven unit circle appearances, including two times in the half million dollar circle of achievement and four times in the circle of excellence. And she has led her unit to the $1,100,000 circle of excellence. Everyone, please help me welcome independent elite executive senior sales director, Eben Osaze. Wow, we are here in seminar. I couldn't be prouder, more honored and humbled to be with you today and among these powerhouse leaders. Oh my goodness. So my tips from the top, you know, are really just a little bit more uh, investigative. So I'm going to go over some things that we do, okay, that I've been doing this year. So what do I look for in unit members? I'm always looking for people who are personable, friendly, thoughtful, accountable, and most important, they have integrity. That is key. And then how do I cast the vision to them? Oh, I love that word. My future national area is the vision, the vision. And we're always talking about connecting to their vision, connecting to their souls. What do they dream of creating, accomplishing or experiencing either personally or for someone who's super important to them? So then when promoting reds, what do we look for to create, you know, any special events? Do we do pay setters, classes, challenges? Well, oh my goodness. During this season, we created what's called the rave, the rave, recognizing people of vision and excellence, public recognition virtually with not only their unit members, but also their families. It was huge. Um, you just saw that person just light up and glow and get affirmed by people who they'd be surprised to hear from. So also in doing that, if so, what were the results, right? And so in recreating what we did from that rave, guys, it created a huge momentum. So from July of 2020 to July of 2021, we developed nine new sales directors in our organization, first, second, and third line. Oh my goodness, what a year, what a year. So what do we do to support a unit member on her journey to becoming more? We've done it all, conference calls, individual coach, coaching sessions, group coaching sessions, challenges, etc. We also, of course, quarterly have pace setters or a pink boot camp quarterly. Weekly huddles. Oh my goodness, that was a key tip that I got where I actually had some individual time with people where they could connect with me. In addition to virtual launches, virtual events, and partnerships, creating places for people to plug into and win. How do I continue to build my unit while leading a top unit? Great question. Guys, number one, plenty of support. Support at home, support in the office. I'm so grateful for the people who I'm connected to. Virtual support of my customers, my beauty consultants, even support for recognition, making sure everyone feels a part. Also, we created separate huddles for our Salesforce leaders and our Salesforce directors to stay connected one hour each week. Guys, this is where a place where we can really breathe belief into them as they are building their units and building others themselves. How do we draw inspiration from our mentor's wisdom? Oh my goodness. That was something that we have always reveled in. And so I'm so grateful for the connections where people were, hap were happy and willing to share. That really made a huge difference. And so what about working our business full circle? My key tip in working the business full circle is there is fortune in the follow-up. You have to schedule it if you expect it. What is my best advice for all sales directors? Okay. My best advice for all sales directors, never, ever forget how you got there. Be the top beauty consultant in your unit. You did it. You got to continue to do it. You guys have a sensational seminar. Wow, Eben, thank you for closing on that note. Weren't these tips and teachers phenomenal? Well, 
I can't believe this, but our time together has come to an end. Mary Kay Ash was a forever student and learner, and she said school is never out for the pro. So thank you to everyone who showed up and logged on to listen and learn more. And a huge thank you to all of our brilliant teachers who gave their time and energy and love to all of us today. They deserve a huge round of applause. Today, you have learned how to erase and replace, start beauty consultants strong, and create massive growth with pink possibility chats. You learned how to choose and over or. Create an environment for everyone to win. Embrace the miracle in the middle, and remember the fortune is in the follow-up. Who came to mind as you were listening to these classes today? Connect with them right now. Ladies, thanks again for attending the live sales director workshop, and we'll see you soon at Leadership 2022. Bye-bye.